Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Gaming, I'm Nathan. Today I'm going to take up this game with your time and bandwidth. Today's game is Disney's Dreamlight Valley. Animal Crossing meets Disney meets Number Go Up in this Disney Life Simulator. Is it worth sharing a valley with Mickey? Disney Dreamlight Valley is currently in early access and is available on Switch, PlayStation, PC, and Xbox and is available via Xbox Game Pass. To play it now, the game costs $30, but it is worth knowing this will be a free-to-play game once it leaves early access and the game will last you dozens of hours with more to come. So what exactly is Disney's Dreamlight Valley? Well, it is Stardock's take on on Animal Crossing Disney Edition with a bit of Stardew Valley and a lot of free-to-play style currencies mixed in for good measure. You play as, well, yourself as an adult, not a child, oddly enough, who returns to their childhood home only to be whisked away into Dreamlight Valley, a magical place where all those Disney characters you know and love hang out, or rather used to hang out. You see the place is corrupted with dark thorny plants and everybody is forgetting who they are and what they need to do, so it's up to you to purge the darkness, bring everybody back, and make friends with them so they can all remember who they are and how exactly they can make the Disney Corporation the most cash. The game's main strategy is to give you a bajillion possible things to do and then set you loose to make your own fun. Go fishing in various biomes, plant and harvest crops, dig around for treasure, mine rocks for minerals, and pawn all that stuff you find to Goofy for sweet cash. Pretty much everything you do feeds into getting one of two primary resources, dream light or star coins. Star coins are used to buy stuff, be that cosmetics, paying Tom Nook, uh, I mean Scrooge, to build houses for new villagers, upgrades, and so on, while dream light is used to unlock new stages and biomes. Stages are unlocked via the castle and send you to a smaller zone where a particular Disney character or two live, for example, Remy's Kitchen from Ratatouille. Once you're there, you have to do some small side quests for them before they'll come back to the valley with you. Then you have to pay out the wazoo to Scrooge to build them houses so they can actually, you know, live there. The loop continues with prices across the board increasing as you go along, encouraging grinding. But thankfully, there's even more bars to fill as every villager has a friendship meter that can be raised a multitude of ways. They all have quests to unlock at certain friendship levels and can be given gifts with daily favorite gifts providing bigger bonuses. But the fastest way is to simply hang out with them, having them tag along while you do your chores of fishing, digging, and so on. They will also give bonus items if you assign them to specialize in that task. So you should always have a buddy while doing activities. It is worth pointing out that while this game does have a day-night cycle and an energy bar, unlike, say, Animal Crossing, I did not notice any limit to your activities or events based on the day, and you can always fill your energy simply by walking into your house, and villagers don't have a cap on how long they'll hang out with you, etc. So there's no natural stops or forced pauses, you can grind this to death should you wish. And basically, that is it. Get to the valley, get your favorite Disney folk to come live with you and hang out, and be sure to fish with Goofy because that's the fastest way to get rich quick. So what did I like about Disney's Dreamlight Valley? Well, the aesthetic was very charming, even as someone who doesn't really care a lot about Disney, the whole thing has that same kind of feel you'd get going to Disneyland. Additionally, the loop itself is very addicting, with every action you do feeding into the larger number go up type situation, meaning it's a super Skinner box of dopamine. And lastly, there's an insane amount of stuff to do and unlock in this game, with every character having stuff to get from leveling, etc, etc. If you love Disney, there's a boatload of things here to unlock that are Disney related. When it comes to the bad, the flow itself is fairly basic, and there doesn't seem to be stuff tied to the real day-night cycle, as I mentioned, meaning you do just do the same loop over and over. Additionally, I encounter more than a few bugs, some game-breaking, my wife's game got her stuck where she couldn't use a stove to cook and the other quest glitched out if she got the ingredients before the quest began, things like that. And lastly, the game does get grindy with tons of stuff you have to grind overall. And while it isn't too bad right now in like the initial half dozen hours, I could easily see it ramping up once the microtransactions kick in. I'm not gonna let something that is potential affect my rating for the record, but I have played other Stardot games and I tend to know how these things play out, so I am a little wary. As you know, I rate games here on a three-point scale, must play, maybe consider, don't bother. I think Disney's Streamlight Valley is a maybe consider, but it's definitely a hidden gem. It caught me off guard. I wouldn't expect a lame knockoff of Animal Crossing, and instead found a Disney Skinner dopamine box that hooked me pretty hard for a lot of hours. I will say, once I put it down for a day or so, I didn't really find myself being compelled to return to it, but if you just play for a couple hours a day and love Disney, this game is going to be right up your alley. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you played Disney's Dreamlight Valley, what do you think about it? Please let me know in the comments, but regardless, go out there and give it a look-see.